Oh boy, I embedded different 3D prints in plaster and annealed them at temperatures over their melting point. This might be one of the most interesting test results I think I might have gotten in a long time. Let's find out more. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. Part of this video is sponsored by Autodesk and their software AutoCAD. For ages I've been looking for the holy grail of 3D printing and this is for me getting 3D prints with a strength similar to injection molded parts. 3D printing materials can be really strong but most of them show only 50% or less strength if they are loaded perpendicular to the layers. In the past I tried a couple of methods to improve layer adhesion or fuse the layers together post printing. Even though some helped a little, none of them showed a significant difference. A couple of tests involved annealing the parts, simply in an oven, submerged in sand or even ABS, internally reinforced with polycarbonate. Annealing usually involves dimensional changes of the parts from either sagging because the print became soft or reduction of the internal stresses or crystallization. In the comments under one particular video, viewers wanted me to anneal my parts in plaster to minimize warping and even using the closed cast as a mold in which I can remelt the printed part and fuse the layers together. So this is what I finally been working on. If you have performed tests with those or similar techniques, please let us know down in the comments. In the past, I mostly did these tests with PLA because that's still my most favorite material. This time though, I also included PETG to see if this polymer behaves differently. And as a small spoiler, this was actually a great idea. I printed a bunch of samples, put them into plaster, dried and then annealed them to finally test them for their layer adhesion and compare these values to the untreated samples. Basically, all of the test samples were printed in a standing orientation, so that we later can test the layer adhesion. I still printed a couple of lying ones to have these test values as the ideal reference. I printed most of the parts 100% dense, because if we really remelt the plastic, this is the only way the material can flow away. Still, I also printed one test hook in both materials, just with two perimeters and 20% infill to see what amount of deformation we'd really see. For embedding, I used regular Plaster of Paris from the hardware store. I mixed small batches, one after the other, submerged the parts and then put everything in my vacuum chamber because I tried to remove the bubbles. In hindsight, this probably wasn't the best idea because somehow the vacuum caused the plaster and the water to separate again, making the mixture really hard. For the later casts, I didn't use the chamber anymore and made the mixture noticeably more liquid, so that the bubbles rise to the top on their own way more quickly. Keep in mind that the working time with plaster is only a couple of minutes until it starts setting, so work quickly. Larger quantities can sometimes also be a problem because the mixture significantly warms up during curing and might, in that state, already mess with the polymer. Oh, and by the way, if you enjoy my videos, make sure to subscribe and select the notification bell. A day later, I removed the plaster from the cups to dry it. Drying everything before annealing is very important. Not only would the water start boiling and crack the material, but the water will also cause hydrolysis in the 3D printing material and make it brittle. I made some pretests and noticed that it can be hard and time consuming to dry the parts in the annealing oven, so I instead put them into my food dehydrator at around 50 degrees Celsius. Because it's hard to judge from the outside if the plaster is dry, I weighed the samples regularly until the weight didn't significantly change anymore. Altogether, they were in the dehydrator for around 36 hours. Still, after performing all of these tests, I should have probably left them in there even longer, since not only was the plaster wet, but also the polymer absorbed moisture. Next, I finally put the cylinders into my lab oven, raised the temperature first to 100 degrees Celsius, and then continued all the way to 200 degrees Celsius. 
While our parts are annealing in the oven, let's quickly talk about today's video sponsor Autodesk and their software AutoCAD. AutoCAD has been around for ages and was even my first CAD software that I learned during an internship in the US more than 10 years ago. AutoCAD is a professional computer-aided design software for architects, engineers and construction professionals that rely on precise 2D and 3D drawings. We're currently renovating and adding an additional floor in our existing house for more space, where I created floor plans in AutoCAD to figure out the best room layout and furniture placement. AutoCAD now includes industry-specific libraries with over 750,000 intelligent parts for an efficient workflow. You can work from anywhere with Autodesk AutoCAD because it has powerful mobile and web apps that allow viewing, creating, editing and sharing your designs. Download the 30-day free trial and try AutoCAD out yourself using the link in the description below. If you decide it is the right tool for you, AutoCAD is currently offering a 10% discount if you opt in for a 3-year subscription, but there are also more flexible plans available. If you have a subscription, you won't be left on your own because they not only offer online resources with documentation, tutorials and more, you can even schedule a call or an online chat with a support specialist to directly solve your problems. Thank you Autodesk for sponsoring part of this video and don't forget to try AutoCAD for free using the link below if you got interested. After around 3 hours at the maximum temperature, I turned off the oven and left the parts in there for a night to cool down. The plaster cylinders didn't look significantly different, only one showed a slight crack. Next came the first exciting part and that was removing the plaster from the samples. If you didn't know, by hydrating, so mixing our plaster of Paris with water, we turn it into hard gypsum. The heating process in the annealing oven, more precisely, temperatures over 150 degrees Celsius reverse that process and turn it back into plaster, which should help us to remove the remains from our 3D printed parts. I know from lost PLA casting that the plaster mold quickly crumbles away from the metal when putting it into water, so this is what I went with for the first two cylinders. I used proper gloves because I had the feeling that the solution was quite irritant to my skin. Unfortunately, it turned out that the material was way harder to remove than anticipated and I wasn't able to remove everything properly because also keep in mind that everything that touches the water will turn back into gypsum in no time. I even wasn't able to remove the PLA tensile specimens in one piece because they already snapped in the mold. So with the other two plaster cylinders, I first crumbled away most of the material and then removed the last remaining bits on the running water with a brush and that worked way better. What we were able to see is that the PETG definitely melted because at the hooks some of the material flowed into the air bubbles I wasn't to remove and the hollow hook also collapsed. The PLA parts, on the other hand, didn't look that affected. Even the hollow part still had its initial shape, though there were some spots where the material filled some bubbles, so the material definitely got soft, though probably not as much as PETG. This is probably due to the slow heating in the mold, where the PLA increases its degree of crystallinity by a lot and therefore gets heat resistant up to almost 200 degrees Celsius, which I'll show you in a bit. PETG doesn't show that crystallization effect, why it doesn't get more heat resistant during annealing. But now let's see how the strength of the material really changed. I tested all samples on my DIY universal test machine to increase repeatability. Let's start with the reference hooks that were not treated in any way. First the ones printed standing to charge layer adhesion. The PLA ones failed on average at 69 kg of load. PTG was significantly weaker and failed at only 36 kg. In their ideal lying printing orientation they are of course significantly stronger and PETG failed at 106 kg, PLA even at a whopping 119 kg.
if our remelting and plaster really worked, I would be hoping to get close to those numbers as well. So let's test that out and start with PLA. The hooks that I annealed and plaster failed similarly to the untreated ones right through the layers. Sadly, also the average strength was over 30% lower than before, so here no fusing of the layers happened. But let's get to the PETG and oh boy, those results were more than impressive. The parts didn't snap through the layers, but either violently ripped or even yielded, what never happens with those standing hooks. The final average strength was at 100 kilograms, so only slightly lower than the ideally printed ones and almost three times as strong as before. PLA was disappointing, but PETG seems to have worked just as we hoped it would. The hollow hooks showed similar results, with the PLA hooks becoming weaker and even the deformed PETG hook doubled its strength. Let's also quickly take a look at the standard tensile specimens. I couldn't test PLA because they already broke in the mold. The PETG parts didn't show such a significant improvement in strength, but still managed to increase their strength from 30 to 41 megapascals. And again, the upright printed samples yielded and necked, which really never happens with normal samples. Impressive. We didn't reach the strength of the parts that were printed flat with 53 megapascals, maybe because the reference section was too small or due to the rough surface. Still a very significant improvement in strength that also confirms that this method really works. If we also take a look at the fracture surfaces, we can see some bubbles at the remelted parts, maybe because we didn't dry the plaster cylinders enough before the annealing step. This might be additionally detrimental because PETG tends to hydrolyze when wet, making the parts more brittle. So I think there is still room for improvement. PLA was, like in my previous annealing tests, a little disappointing in terms of strength. You could argue that we didn't properly melt it like the PETG and that's true, though in my pre-tests I did raise the temperatures and got it to melt, but ended up with just a brittle mess in the mold. Still with a more fine-tuned process, we might even be able to achieve our goal here. But what's not disappointing with PLA is that using this plaster annealing process, we are able to heat treat the parts without any warping. Due to the increase in crystallinity, those parts are now able to withstand excessive amounts of heat. In some cases, this might be more interesting for you than pure strength. To demonstrate that, I placed a small as built and annealed part on an aluminum sheet in my oven and added a weight. The untreated part already failed right around the 60 degrees Celsius level, whereas the plaster annealed one, even in its hollow form, was still strong at 170 degrees Celsius. I didn't go any further because I was just about to bake some yeast bread and wanted to avoid any plastic taste in it. I hope you can understand. After the test in the oven, the S-built hook showed the typical deformation signs. The plaster annealed one looked just like before. So yeah, I'm utterly impressed by these results and I still think there is room to improve the process further. I think this is seriously a huge step towards using 3D prints in really demanding applications, though currently it still requires quite a substantial amount of post-processing work. What do you think about these results and what are your ideas to make it better? Leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you're all doing well. If you found this video helpful, then leave a like, share it with the community and make sure that you subscribe for more. If you want to support my work, head over to Patreon, become a YouTube member or use the affiliate links in the description. Go check out my other videos if you currently have more time than usual and want to educate yourself. Stay healthy, auf Wiedersehen and I hope to see you in the next one.